Previously on Sailing Adrift, we took the train through Copper Canyon, leaving from Los Mochis and arriving in the town of Creel. It was a fun escape from the biting bugs of Topolobampo and a great way to celebrate my birthday. Although I do want to remind you, you promised me the first train. You dick. Oh, this is so good. We did some fun things in Creel, like visit a museum. This may or may not be the first and last time we do so. I don't think you're supposed to touch that. Why is it here then? I don't know. It's for display purposes. It say don't touch it. God, you are giving me so much anxiety right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the toddler that you don't want to take anywhere because it oh, touches man, everything. Creel was really good for us. Literally a breath of fresh air. And we had a few days to explore the town. We got ice cream cones. I <laughs> Kelly got mint and I got lime pie. But our time has come to an end. Back to the boat for us. Did a provisioning run. Now I'm putting groceries away, doing some laundry. Yeah, last day here and um, got a lot of work to do, including actual work work. So, whew, better get to it. While I focused on the inside, Chris was working away outside, scraping the garden of growth off of our hull. After our chores were done for the day, we sat back and enjoyed the feeling of being mostly prepared for tomorrow's departure in junction with another spectacular sunset. I have about 20 minutes till departure and Chris and I both got our last luxurious shower in with unlimited water from the marina here. And uh, the next couple weeks are going to be drastically different than we've been living so far. So Chris is up on deck getting the last of the deck ornaments situated, jack lines installed. My job is to focus on the inside so I've done a pretty good job of that. I think I'm almost done. Everything is stowed away and secured. Prepare for takeoff. Okay, fired up. We departed from the dock with an extra set of hands, complimentary of the marina. Unlike the United States, this seems to be very common practice for most marinas we've been to in Mexico. Well, that was smooth. We're I, all like, right. I like having a person on the dock. That's yeah. nice. That's a little luxury I can get behind. We successfully left the marina, but we'd have to dock again soon so we can fill up one more time before really heading out to sea. Fortunately, there's a fuel dock for all the fishing boats not too far from here. First stop, I'm gonna go get some fuel. Right over there. The awkward thing is that it's meant for fishing boats, so tying up is a little sketchy, especially at low tide. We cautiously pulled up with all our fenders out as to not scrape the shit out of ourselves. Even at high tide, we're still pretty low in the water. Every time we fuel up, we include this special additive to help keep our tank clean and our fuel lines clear. We took this opportunity to polish one tank over, top off the other tank, and fill all our diesel jerry cans, even the spare gas can for the dinghies outboard. We really had no idea when we'd have this opportunity again, and at the rate we're motoring along, we thought it best to play it safe. After strapping our jerry cans in, we took off from the fuel dock and headed towards Bahia Agua Verde. Overnight? Did you really just say that? We're already starting to bash around. We can't deal with sail changes at night. That'd be sweet. A few hours later, our status took a turn for the worse. So what's happening right now? Our inverter is not working, which means our starlink is not working. I don't know what's causing it. It's showing a red screen. Do you hear that beep? I the okay, I'm just asking. We 
then spent the next few hours bashing around like this. Water was everywhere. It was getting in through the gaps in our pilot house window frames and the doors. It had completely drenched our inverter. Without our inverter, we had no internet signal. This was very bad for a lot of reasons. The most important being that we can't communicate with anyone other than our VHF radio. Oh, also, I can't work remotely without the internet. So hopefully I don't lose my job over this. We pretty much said goodbye to civilization for the next two weeks, and it's not like we can just go pick up an inverter from this anchorage we're heading towards. On top of that, the beeping we heard earlier was another major problem. It was our bilge pump alarm letting us know that the sea strainer was clogged and we were taking on water down below. This is Chris trying to reach it, but it's nearly impossible without ripping open the whole floor and physically climbing inside the engine room. Plus, we're rocking around, and he has to do all this just by feel so he doesn't bash his head. Meanwhile, there's literally nothing I can do except for watch him struggle and be on call if he needs something or something happens. Well, that was definitely one of the roughest experiences we've had, but we made it through to the light of day. We made a perimeter check on deck and realized both our fuel tank for the dinghy and spare propane tank were now missing from the aft deck. Oh, nice to see the sun come up. The sea state never really calmed down until about oh, 3 a.m. I've been up and letting Kelly sleep, but man, it has been a bit of a shit show. Just uh, it knocked left and right. Our inverter isn't working. So we don't have any kind of internet, which isn't a big deal now, but Kelly relies on that for work and we're about to go off grid for a while. So I've got to make sure I can get that up and running. What else? Seems like there's been several things that have just like, oh, the stupid gimbal on the stove wouldn't stay locked in. We're not cooking, so there's no reason to have it gimbal. And it wouldn't stay locked in, it kept working itself out. Just kind of a, miserable evening. I used the bucket last night in that crazy sea state. I think I got myself uh, a little sick using the head and then trying to deal with this inverter. Want to make sure you stay and look at the horizon, that's for sure. Anyway, it's about 5 o'clock in the morning. We should be there about noon, 1 o'clock. And it is a lot more comfortable now. So um, the sea state is much improved, but we're only getting about mm, between six and eight knots right on the nose. So we'll see how the wind shifts and if we can turn the engine off and sail for a bit. But for now, we're a motor sailing with the main up and uh, starting to see land. So getting close. We tried our luck at fishing with minimal success. Reel in. Yeah, we caught some vegetarian fish. Oh yeah. Chris caught a salad. <laughs> Look at that wad. We did catch a little bonito, but threw him back. It was too much effort to deal with for the amount of yield. By this point, the sea state had calmed down significantly. Still not enough wind to do anything with, so we took down our mainsail as we approached Bahia Agua Verde. Bahia Agua Verde. Water looks pretty blue to me. How about you? So far, gotta, gotta get up to the beach and see. We have some friends already. That's nice. We found a spot among other sailboats. Then we dropped the hook into some of the clearest water we had seen so far. Next, we backed down on the anchor to make sure we were holding. This anchorage had a nice sandy bottom, and we had plenty of swinging room. And we landed. Oh goodness, peace and quiet. Kelly, I think we picked a great anchor spot compared to like the people around us. It seems like a professional 
that job, don't you think? Yeah. Let's, let's get this boat into hangout mode. We then transform the boat into hangout mode, which means making it livable versus operational. We opened our hatches, set up our bug nets and wind scoop, put our galley back together, set up my office, and made our sleeping quarters cozy again. We also pulled out our water toys for the first time, and some new fishing lures for bottom feeders. A short while later that evening, Chris nagged something and called out to the other boats. You guys ever stupidly put out a line after dark and then catch something? <laughs> nope, no one does that. This is big. Oh, damn it. Oh, now it's the one that got away. Oh, it just broke? How is that possible? This is a 100 pound line, but. Crazy. Darn, no luck on the fishing front, but tomorrow's a new day. When we arrived last night, or yesterday afternoon, there were three uh, big uh, sailboats and one power boat here in the anchorage. Power boat left, and the first thing this morning, all three sailboats took off. We finally thought we'd have some new friends here, but now we're just back to being the two of us. Oh well, I suppose there's worse things to bitch about. Kelly's taking a bit of a siesta, catching up from our rough little transit. Man, it was it was a bit hairy. We, we lost some stuff. It was the first time we were really like nose bashing against the waves. And then about halfway across the Sea of Cortez, not only were we nose bashing, we're also getting a side to side roll. So it was pretty miserable. It really, really sucked. I give it a one out of five, would not recommend. Anyway. There is a small village, uh, but it looks more just like kind of like a beach camp spot. I'll have to go check it out. Today, we're going to test out our new paddle boards. We bought some cheap ones on Amazon, picked them up in San Diego. I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna pump it up and see what it's like. Those are huge. You're up. I am. How's your nap? That was all right. What does that mean? It wasn't very long. Uh, I did fall asleep though. You don't feel refreshed? No. What? I was just saying how like after a day like yesterday you kind of get your like morale beat up and thought maybe going on a hike and playing with the water toys would help yeah. lift it. The sup seem like a great idea. Yeah, that's what's up. Chris pumped up our sups, and then we were able to splash them for the first time. Splash. You ready for some fun? Yeah. That's gonna be epic. It is gonna be epic. Paddle boarding, take one. Step one, sit on the board. Step two, get on your knees. This is achievable. Up here's we're only gonna make it to step two today. There you go. Look at you paddle. Look at me. I'm a paddle boarder. <laughs> but this this kind's a stand-up paddle board, Kelly. Yeah, we're getting there. So I'm practicing my maneuvers out here. Mm-hmm. Out here in the beautiful bay of Agua Verde. Don't don't untie me. Don't you do it. Christopher. Christopher. Yes. I don't like this. I'm at the end of my rope. You want know, to toss it to you? Sure. Yeah. What is that gray shadow below you? Oh, off. <laughs> Bye. I'm making my way. All right, I'm gonna come join you. Chris joined me and we spent the next few hours paddling around and peacefully enjoying the cove. Looking into the clear water below, we saw all kinds of fish and got our daily dose of vitamin D. This experience was a huge morale boost after our crappy voyage over. We both really needed this. We're back from our paddling adventure. We never really stood up, but it was just what we needed. Yes, it was. 
We had a great time. We went from this boat to that beach. And then we hung out there for a while and went from that beach all along this coastline to see those cool rocks. And then we're like, hey, this is still fun. So we kept going. I went down to a little town. We just kind of like looked at what's going on over there. And then we're like, hey, this is still fun. Let's go see this new catamaran that showed up way over there and said hi. Where we paddled all the way back to here. And here's Kelly. Say hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. You want me to take that from you? Sure. Tomorrow we have a plan to bring you along on our adventures because we want to ding you over and maybe take the drone and do some cool stuff with that. And then maybe go on a hike and then maybe do some paddle boarding. We don't we know. have a drone? Wait, hold up. Oh God. Oh. Tune in next week as we explore this stunning anchorage and see what Bahia Agua Verde has to offer. Until next time, adios and thanks for watching! This video made possible by our patrons. Good job, you made him angry. Yeah. <laughs> There's a wasp in here. <laughs> I swatted at him and bumped him. Yeah, at first you were like, just just ignore it, babe. And then he gets this fly yeah. swatter out and then he attacks it and he I... fucking misses. <laughs> yeah, and now we're hiding. Staying Go. Low. Oh, God. Get out. Go. There. Okay. okay, we got him up front. Sweet. All right, I'm going to get him out of here. That's some progress. Let me get him out the door. You get him.